Hey everybody, Rob here, and I am going to demonstrate a new feature coming out in Redwood 8.0, and that is background jobs, processing work in the background. What is a background job? So, you know, your typical request might look something like this. Request comes in, you maybe do some create user stuff, and then you're going to send a welcome email, let's say. And this is generally not the fastest process in the world, but the user now has to wait for this because this is all in line, and they get a response. But with the background job, we can shuttle some of that stuff off and run that in the background. So in this case now, the actual request is pretty quick. Create user, done. But where the welcome email would be sent now, that's shuttled off to a separate process, and this runs sort of in the background with the worker process. And that's what I'm going to show you now. So let's do a quick demo. So let's go to this sample app here. It's pretty simple. All it has is a home page, and then you can sign up. So I'm going to come here and sign up. And you'll see there's a weird delay there. That's the email delay. So let's take a look at how I did that. I kind of simulated that. Right now it's just sending locally, but I simulated a little delay in here. So this is the auth function that handles your sign up stuff. And this is in the sign up options section of the doc here or the, the file. And here's the handler. So this is what to do when a user signs up. In this case, we're going to create the user and then we're going to send them the welcome email and then we return the user. And I put in this promise here that waits two seconds. So it simulates a two second delay, you know, talking to a real mail server. And, and we can see these mails. We have a project here called Studio. So if you do Yarn RW Studio, this should open your browser and you get a bunch of tools over here. And one of them is the inbox. And now if I go back and sign up again, Two second, but now we can see the email. So it comes into Studio. We can view our emails here, and they only show up here if Studio itself is running. So if Studio is not running, the emails just kind of go into the nether realm. But here we go. As long as it's running, we'll get to see it. So we don't want the user to have that delay. So let's put that into a background job. So we'll go back to our code here, and we're going to set up background jobs. So Yarn RW set up jobs, and this is going to do a few things for us. We'll see that it created a database table. So we have a new database table here called background job. And this is everything it needs for the background job system to work. So we'll migrate that. Create background job. And it also created a config file. So if we go into source lib jobs, you see there's a file here that it built for us. So by default, you don't have to touch this at all, and this will work as you expect, but we can just quickly go through it here. So we'll see we have the job manager and what we do is we have different adapters. So right now we only have the Prisma adapter. That means it's storing your jobs and working on them in the database via Prisma. But in theory, you could have other ones here, Redis, SQS, RabbitMQ, etc. There are some name queues you can go in. We give it a logger for logging and then you configure workers and we'll see those in a second where it actually runs your job. You're going to give it a little bit of configuration. And then this exports a scheduler. So this is what you're going to use to say, hey, I want to do this job later. And we're going to see that in a minute. All right, so we have jobs set up. Now we need an actual job to send the email. So let's generate one of those. So we can do yarn redwood G for generate job. And we'll say welcome email. And this is going to name this the same as that and just put job on the end. So we'll see here now we have a jobs directory and a welcome email. Right now it just export something to the logs. You can see that it works, but we're going to put our mail here instead. So let's go to auth and we'll take this out for now and we'll say job. It's going to go there and we'll put this in here and we'll keep that delay so we can see now that the user is not going to wait at all. There may be a delay running the job, but the user will never know. Uh, and now what we need to do is you'll notice this reference to the user email. So we need a way to get this in. So what we can do is we can pass parameters to our job. So we'll say email here and we'll use that. And then we need to import the stuff that the mailer needs. So we'll come over here to auth and we'll borrow this, put this in the job now. And that's it. So you'll see the job just uses the this create job function on the jobs thing that we exported in the config file. And it has a name of the queue that this job will go into and then a function called perform. And this is what you actually want to do, want the job to do. This is where your logic goes. So now back here, we will import Remember, we created that schedule card later, so we'll import that. And then we'll import the job itself. So it is 
welcome email job. And then we'll go back down to our handler where we create the user. And now we're going to say later, welcome email job. And it's going to be user.email. And when you do the arguments, you pass them in an array here because the perform can take as many arguments as you want. And this way, they just all are one arg passed to this function. So the welcome email job we want to run later. And here are the parameters it needs. So now let's save that. And we'll restart our server because we created the job setup stuff since we last ran it. So we'll just restart that to pick it up. And now when we sign up, now we return instantly. So where's the job? Did the job run? What's going on here? If we look at, let's run console, yarn rwc for console, we can run commands in the context of the app, including access in the database. So we'll say db background job find many. And there's our job. So it's the welcome email job. And you can see that the args it got, it got my email address. It's in the default queue and it's going to run at, and this is the time that it went into the database. So basically like run as soon as possible, but it still isn't running, right? We need to actually run uh, the workers. So we have a new command for that, yarn rw jobs work. And this will then look in the database, find jobs and start running them one at a time. And you can see there. So here it picked it up, job one started job one success. And you may have noticed there was a two, three second delay in there. So now you can see there. So I just signed up with user 14 and there's email 14. So it came in and you'll see now it's just, if we let it run, I can just log out and create another user again. And if we watch here, there's our email. When you're in that mode, yarn rw jobs work. It's just going to run here forever looking for jobs. There's a couple more modes we can run this in. So we can say, jobs work off, which will look for any jobs, run them and then quit. So instead of it persistently running, it just does any outstanding jobs and stops. And there's also yarn RW jobs start. And this is more of your production interface where it starts the runners and then detaches them and closes itself. So now the workers just running in the background persistently. So if we look at our activity monitor here, we can see RW jobs worker stars means the queue It's running on stars, all queues. And this is the first worker. So it starts with a zero. So again, it's still running, so I can come over here and sign up. That was 16. So if we wait a second here, we should see 16 pop in. There it is. So now your worker's running in the background forever. You probably don't want that to run in, like that in dev. Like you'll probably forget about it. It's just sitting there sucking up CPU cycles. So you can go in here and say yarn RW jobs stop. Assuming there are some running, it'll find them and kill those processes. Now, what if we don't want to run a job right away? Like maybe we want to have a little grace period here before they get this email. We can put a delay in here. So we can say, wait 300. That's 300 seconds. So now the job will go into the database right away, but the workers will wait until it's five minutes old before that actually runs them. And we can also say, wait until, if you want to give it a very specific date time. So now you can say, you know, in the year 3000, I want to send the millennium reminder job <laughs> and yeah so that's the basics of jobs so check out the docs tons more usage examples including uh, what to do in production because you want to be able to monitor them and make sure they keep running and if something happens if you have a bad job by mistake that you know kills the process or something you want to monitor it make sure it keeps running there's a little bit of explanation here of how queues work and priorities you can have jobs run before other jobs and then it gets into all kind of details about the configuration so all the different configuration options you can use and what we're looking to do in the future. So we've got some more features coming, recurring jobs. Right now you could have a job schedule itself at the end if you needed to recur. And we talk about that in this document, but that'll be a, we'll have a native syntax for that soon. Lifecycle hooks. So before it performs, after it performs, if it succeeds, if it fails, you can kind of separate your logic out instead of having everything in one giant perform function. You can separate out those concerns into nice little manageable chunks. But yeah, that's jobs. Enjoy.